No opening statements, just straight to you guys, if, that, if that's okay with you. Totally fine, Eddie. What can you tell us about what you've seen from this group so far this spring? Uh, a little bit of a, a unique spring. We got our roster a little earlier this year, which I think has yielded some positive benefits. There's, there's a lot of familiarity here, um, especially on the pitching side of things. A lot of guys that have been here before, a lot of guys that are veterans to, to the Southern League and veterans to our culture here and what, what we're trying to do and create. Um, and then same thing on the, on the position player side. It's a little bit of a younger group, um, but guys that it's not their first taste of it. So there's a lot of familiarity. Um, from a work standpoint, we've been really, really pleased with what we've been able to do so far and looking forward to getting started on Friday. A little bit of a unique situation this year. Obviously, you guys always have a lot of top 30 talent, but having top four prospects in order and then number one and number 30 all in the same spot, what do you think it says about the kind of guys you're going to have on the team this year? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, 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 a, it's a talented group. I mean, um, it's a talented group, and it, it makes you feel good about, you know, what we're – what, what max capacity for us looks like, but at the same time too, it's like we're aware of all those things and, and working to try to keep our focus as small as we can keep it. So we're aware of that stuff, aware with how uh, of how good we feel about the players that we have in there and more important, the people that we have in there um, and just really not having any of our attention be split any 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 further than, than the workout this afternoon also too, so. Played with the major league club at some point last year. How valuable do you think that experience will be from them mentoring some of the younger guys? Probably the most valuable experience we have here. Um, there's uh, at this point now, there's a lot of reference points uh, for guys going up and staying up, and guys uh, going up and coming back down from a staff standpoint. But when you've got players that have actually seen it firsthand. Um, it, it 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 hits different. Um, there's a different level of of uh, relatability from player to player, and it's really really valuable and something we're going to lean on a ton. And you just bring you another season back in the Rocket City. Just kind of what have you learned the past couple of years that you're going to take in? We don't have enough time for that. Um, it is it has been specifically with the staff here, um, with with Michael and with Dan. Um, and then Doug Henry, who we've added to the staff this year, who will help Mike and, and, and work in the bullpen for us. Doug and I were together in 21 in Pasco. Um, Doug has had a massive, massive in, impact on me. Um, everybody kind of knows how, how I feel about Dan, and Mike and I go back a long way. Doug's been huge for me, and Doug is a huge addition for our relievers in bullpen, and I think Mike would tell you the same thing. So um, just the uh, – when, when you play 140 games or 138 games in 160 days, it's impossible not to learn a ton if you pay attention. And then when you're exposed to the people that I've been lucky enough to be exposed to on, on, on the staff here, we don't, we don't have time for me, to, for me to answer that question accurately. Just kind of for you guys, um, obviously the season hasn't even started yet. You're still kind of really getting to know the group. But what is the goal for Trash Pandas this week? To do a good job this afternoon. It's literally that simple. Um, we will, we've got, every day has, has a purpose, every, every day has a main priority, and we're going to fulfill that purpose and priority today, and we're going to do the same thing tomorrow, and then we'll get on the bus and, 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 and go to Tennessee on Friday and, and uh, you know, grind to give them whatever we got. So. Speaking of experience, there's only one guy on the team that's actually been here longer than you have, and that's Brett Carey, who's going to be starting his fourth season. Mm -hmm. What can he bring to this team and kind of help you with, if anything? I think that if you really look at specifically and just speaking for when I've laid eyes on Brett from 22 until now, I think last year was a massive step from just a pitchability standpoint, just how much more efficient he's been able to be, the way he's able to sequence. Talk about somebody that's learned a ton. Um, when you look at kind of what he was in 22 and the evolution of himself, and honestly, you know, this year in spring training may be the best version of Brett that we've seen yet. Um, so yeah, if we lean on him from a stability standpoint, um, he offers feedback and off the charts person too. So he's somebody that you can go to and ask him how this thing has progressed for him, for us to be able to learn too, and the lines not get blurred at all. And he's a huge resource for the other pitchers in the room too. One thing you always talk about, and we want to talk about wins and losses, you're mostly focused on development. When you have a couple guys who did play at the major league level last year, how do you try and explain to them like, hey, it doesn't mean you're not good enough to be there. It means that we just have to polish. I, I, I don't I think if you did try to have that conversation you'd be insulting their intelligence a little bit I think those guys are very well aware of the nature of the industry they're aware of roster limitations and they always have a ton of confidence in who they are in players too so I think there's an, there, there's there's been enough guys that have enough time in the system and in the industry now that they've got a good feel for that type of thing and we feel really good about where we're at You guys play a crap ton of games in a 
short period of time. You're always learning something every day. Right. You're not, you're not going to win every day. Of course, not going right. to every day. How do you just kind of explain that to the people at home? Like, we're playing a lot of baseball. We might not always get the exact result. Right. Before, but we're trying our best. You know, I, I think if Dan was out here, he would tell you that maybe the people at home could teach me something about that, too, because it's something that we, we, all, we all grind on at heart. But it's, yeah, it's... It's six days a week for 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 however many weeks, and and it the really the only way to navigate something that kind of what's the word I'm looking for something that that's kind of uh, to that scale is just to break it down into small chunks, and so you kind of break the season down into one week battles and in a one week series, and then you break that series down into one day battles, and we're going to do our best to fight this thing one day at a time. I, I am I am a fan of anything Garrett and Lindsey deem appropriate. Um, I will punt on the hats and then use that as a segue to just to brag on how well this whole thing's run. I'm I'm a fan of everything here. So the the hats included, it is an incredibly unbelievable place to come to work every day. Our players are lucky. I'm I'm lucky. The staff's lucky. It is it, it is an awesome place with e- with even better people. Um, and so whatever that group of people deems appropriate for what we're going to do here, I'm going to be a huge fan of. Andy, uh, we talk a lot about experience. The two youngest guys on the team, Nelson Brown and Kim Dana, uh, two of the higher prospects. What have you very, very early impressions of them so far and their comfortability here in the double A? Uh, just two people that are very comfortable in their own skin. One, very hungry to learn, too. So uh, you're excited about everybody, incredibly excited for them. Um, excited for the opportunity that they've got in front of them and really excited to have a chance to, to, to have a hand in their development and journey. Anything else for Andy? Okay. All good? Beautiful. All right. So we're super excited for Tuesday to roll around. The team is here. They're excited. Tuesday we have our opening night celebration. So we've got a magnet schedule giveaway. We've got post-game fireworks on a Tuesday. We, you get the chance to come out and see all of the new items that we have here, the new food, the new kids zone, all the great amenities that we have. So it's definitely a very exciting time. Our first bobblehead is on Wednesday. we got a Ben Joyce bobblehead. So you definitely want to get your tickets. Come on out on Wednesday. Get yourself this awesome bobblehead. He's throwing heat. He's got flames on that baseball. Um, Wednesday's also a dog day, so it's our first dog day of the season, and we're adding sections one and two for dog day this year. So you can actually bring your dog, get a reserved seat, and sit in a seat this season in sections one and two, as well as still be out on the, the berm with your dog, which is still just a $1 ticket. Thursday's happy hour, so we have an extended happy hour from 5 to 7 o'clock, $3 domestic drafts at the Inline Electric Rock Porch and the Bandito Stand in the Bill Penny Plaza. Fireworks, of course, back on every Friday and Saturday night. And then Sundays, kids run the bases after the game. Just like always, it's a fan favorite for them as well. Yeah, we're not only trying to add a new twist every year, but we're just trying to improve everything from your experience parking, driving in, coming through the gates. Our metal detectors are bigger and better this year. They're faster, so your entrance time should be much more seamless. You won't have to empty your pockets every time you come up to the gate. Um, So we're just really looking forward to welcoming the fans, having the fans back, um, just seeing our season ticket holders and everyone in the familiar faces that we're used to seeing around the ballpark. So you got three years under your belt at this point. What excites you about this point year and all the new things that have happened? I think this year we have the most additions that fans are going to actually be able to enjoy from the food to the kids zone. I mean, the kids zone has four inflatables. There's a bounce house out there. There's an obstacle course that kids can run through. There's a ski ball. There's a little other kind of home run toss. And all of that is just a wristband to price. You can use all of those inflatables throughout the entire game. It's $10 a game. But if you're a kids club member, it's $8 every game. So you get a little bit of a discount. And kids club members actually this year also get to skip the line for kids run the bases so if you're someone that wants to run the bases every Sunday game get your kids to be part of the kids club membership because those kids get to join and just lead that lead the way every Sunday of course for you guys baseball is the main focus but it's not the main focus for everybody that comes here how important is it for you guys to be able to offer all these other things for younger kids and people want to watch 
Absolutely. You do not have to be a baseball fan to come and enjoy Trash Pandas baseball. We are entertaining you from the time you walk through the gates till the last pitch, to the fireworks going on, till the time you leave. We are waving goodbye to you. We have new mascots this year. Nope, I just let something leak, I think. Um, so be on the lookout for that. We have a lot of great new um, amenities. Like I said, we've got murals around the concourse, things to look at, things to take pictures with. So, I mean, year four, I think, is just really stepping it up and going to have, have a lot of fun. And theme night ticket packages, we've done so many more of those so we have wine night ticket packages we have daddy daughter nights we have star wars packages we have huntsville havoc packages so many things going on that for everyone anything that you love and you enjoy you can experience that here at trash pandas baseball Yeah, I think we just want to provide a family, fun, enjoyable experience no matter what you want to do on a day where we're playing a game. You don't have to love baseball, but you want to love coming and having the food, seeing the mascots, seeing getting a t-shirt shot to you in the stands, catching a soft toss ball, um, all of those things just... They just make for a great community feel. We want all of our community members to feel like they're part of this here. So we're doing a lot of things on our concourse with nonprofits, having them involved this year, our jersey auctions. We have six of those throughout the season where we're giving back to a local nonprofit with those funds. Um, we're really trying to in up our reading program. So we've been in schools throughout the entire off season reading to kids. And if they complete the reading program, they're getting a ticket voucher to come and redeem at certain games. So our education days, our reading days, we're really hoping to just make an impact here locally within the community, a positive impact. And I think our players are looking forward to that too, just being able to, to get out there, meet the fans, meet the kids, and just really have a great time here in the community. One other thing I got for you, obviously because it only impacts the team, having them wear a hat that was inspired by the purchases of fans, what do you think that says about the fan involvement Honestly, I just told the team that they get a discount in the in the clubhouse store, and they were like, oh, sweet. All right, we're sending our families. So, And their families come, and they learn that they get a discount, and they're like, wait, we need three more things. But I think just seeing the, the our team embracing the uniforms, the logos, the hats, they love it just as much as our fans do. And our fans truly, that num our home hat now was the number one selling hat, which was not even an on-field official cap. So the fact that we were able to make that addition because it's something the fans have wanted, and now now you can wear that same cap that the players are wearing on the field is just super cool. Lindsay, you had a pair of college uh, baseball games over these past few weeks with Alabama and Auburn mm -hmm. playing here. Um, what were some of the things that were learned from those games and how to help you guys prepare for this upcoming? I think the biggest thing from a concession standpoint was training our staff. We have a brand new sweet space, which is a frozen yogurt and ice cream stand. We've got a lot of new food items. We have new points of sale. We have cinnamon roasted nuts. So just the, um, the training and explaining things and having our staff have the knowledge to be able to share with our fans to give them that great experience when they're coming here. Um, you know, we've learned a lot about traffic patterns, um, you know, we can't control the traffic lights. We need the city of Madison to come help us with the, the flow of the lights. So once we had that fixed after the first Auburn game, we were able to flow people in and out much faster. Um, again, the, the security gates are going to be much quicker this year. So we really use the Auburn and Alabama game as a true, true test and, and to work out all of those kinks, so to speak, and just train our staff to know the best way to handle any situation that comes at them throughout the night. All right. Thank you.